before we go any further, toss out everything you think you know about hacking. That's because the grand hack fest at MIT has nothing to do with an online criminal enterprise. The two-day conference held over the weekend in Kendall Square had a much more noble goal, bringing together some 400 innovators from around the world to collaborate on solving some of healthcare's most pervasive problems. Here to talk about the Hackfest and the medical innovations to come out of it is Zen Chu, a senior lecturer in healthcare innovation at MIT who created the Hacking Medicine Program. Welcome to Greater Boston, Zen. Thanks for Appreciate the attention. You coming. Yeah. yeah, really. I mean, well, the first obvious question is why are you calling it a Hackfest? Because everybody has a negative connotation about that. Well, yeah, you know, hacking is, uh, doesn't have a negative connotation at MIT. It's got a long history, actually, of really being uh, put on a pedestal because really hacking means the original intent is clever uh, innovations, clever mm -hmm. solutions to hard, naughty problems. And so we believe uh, wholeheartedly that healthcare needs more hacking. That's true. So tell me a little bit about some of these innovations that your group of self-proclaimed nerds came up with. Um, starting with one that we have some pictures of. Uh, it's, it's a device for managing uh, tinnitus, which is, of course, ringing in the ears. Tell me about right, that. Right. So, you know, the clinicians and, uh, and, and patients actually present some of these problems. And then we have a mix of designers and engineers that come together to really think about new and different solutions uh, or cheaper solutions for this. And so uh, that's what happens in 48 hours. And it's really random because uh, uh, the, the problems that they, that, that they uh, uh, go after and uh, what ends up coming out of it depending on do they decide their own or do, do you assign them, all right, you know? They decide their own. You know, they go with their passions and they uh -huh. go with their interests and, and you pull in different skills and so there's a lot of randomness to the, to the weekend. Mm. All right, so the next one, somebody took on Parkinson's. This is, uh, this is really improvised and obviously if, if it ever went to market it would be far more specific, I mean uh, sophisticated, but these are like little laser beams that are coming off these slippers that I guess give somebody a guiding point to walk or something. Right, and it's, it allows them to, to better measure the gait, uh, and then, uh, you know, I, I think uh, uh, that was actually a team that flew in from India. So <laughs> they were applying uh, from, from a great engineering school, Valor Institute of Technology, mm -hmm. and they brought 12 folks, and we've had a hackathon there. Um, and they see some of these problems through a different lens and certainly through a different cost lens. Uh, so, and those are ideas that if they create solutions that can actually be effective in India, those can boomerang back and actually be useful and incredibly low cost mm -hmm. in, uh, in the U.S. All right, so it's, it's not just hardware, though. There's other kinds of things. Yeah, there's a lot of software hacking and data hacking. I mean, we're inundated with data in healthcare, but how do you make meaning out of it? How do you make it useful? How do you make it impact the patient, mm -hmm. truly? So one of these things that we also have is this app face uh, recognition that uh, some of your people came up with. This is just sort of a generic person, but right. there's a dime on her forehead, so there's like a, a size reference, and then, then they can really kind of diagnose off of this kind of cranial facial things like maybe right. Marfan syndrome and that kind of thing. Exactly, exactly. So it's, you know, there's a lot of rare diseases that really can be early diagnosed um, w where, you know, on average it takes uh, 11 years to properly mm -hmm. diagnose some of these things. You can quickly diagnose through these algorithms and software. And the, one of the clever things that came out of the weekend was that they said we need to uh, match relative size and you can just have a database of coins around the world and just put that coin up against the forehead and then you actually have that relative sizing. All right, so let's say there's something that is really definitively clever enough to be put out there into the medical world, you know, an actual device. I mean, how do, right. you, how do you take it to market? Well, I, that's where the, the flip side of, of the weekend is, which is um, matching good inventions with proper business models in healthcare. That's the hardest part, right? Who pays, especially in, you know, the complexities of healthcare. And, you know, that's how we teach them some frameworks. And when it works, though, you have incredible, uh, rapidly growing startups. Mm -hmm. And the best example is PillPack.com, which came out of uh, one of our hackathons and within a year was venture-backed and live in over 40 states shipping uh, new packaging uh, for p 
patients. Oh, that's so the elderly know which uh, pills to take. Take in a yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. one that actually worked. So they basically hacked the experience of of, of taking multiple drugs from a patient's perspective and they created the packaging and the whole experience. All right, good luck with this. Let us know what next goes to market next. All right, <laughs> thanks a lot. Thanks a lot.